use virtual reality a lot, uh, you sometimes have this feeling. So where it's occurred to me is when I've been in virtual reality with huge crowds of virtual people, like I'm walking through a virtual street and there's loads of virtual characters walking past me. They look at me, they walk by. And then later I'm in a real crowd of people and I sometimes think, hmm, how do I know this one's real and the other one wasn't real? Do we live in a virtual world? The answer is yes, we live in a virtual world because most of what we, what we experience doesn't directly come into our brains and it's like reality. Every, everything we experience and everything we perceive is filtered through our own way of perceiving the world, which is unique to every individual. It's like the virtual world is all around us. You just go on a, on a, on a metro, you just go on a train and you look around. Nobody is there. Everybody is on some other conversation with somebody else. There's multiple parallel worlds going on simultaneously. And it's a current in philosophy and that actually we're living in a simulation. Kind of like was portrayed in the movie The Matrix, that we're living in a simulation and it's not real. And there's even been physicists who've been looking for discontinuities in the fabric of the universe to see if it's kind of made up of essentially pixels. In recent years our group has studied the use of virtual reality in addressing issues of implicit racial bias. In giving people the experience of how it is to be children interacting with adults. In uh, addressing issues of um, cognitive performance and for these techniques we use what we call embodiment which is uh, using virtual reality to replace your body by a virtual body. We have also done work on issues of psychological therapy, for example, fear of heights, fear of public speaking, domestic violence, and also we've developed a self-counseling technique which is based on virtual reality. We, we experimented with this where we gave people a paradigm of how the life-death experience might be. At the end they died and they went through a, a near-death experience with the bright lights and the tunnel and everything. And then they took off the head-mounted display and of course they were still alive. But they were now alive in a different reality. So maybe I'm, again, I'm not saying I believe this, but one paradigm is that our lives in this earth are like a virtual reality and when we die, the head-mounted display comes off and we're in another reality. So virtual reality, it does force you to confront these kinds of issues. It's remarkable how plastic the brain is, how so easily it is at some basic level to accept something as real even though, of course, you always know, you always know it's not real because, you're in, for a start, you remember putting on the head-mounted display, so you're never tricked, you always know it's not real. But nevertheless, it feels like it is. And my, I think my lesson from virtual reality is never believe what you see and hear. Always approach it critically because it may not be anything like how other people perceive and hear it.